All right, so this is ATOG City Limits, and we're doing a special deck tech with Tainted Pact. So, Austin, tell us about tell us about this deck. So, the deck Tainted Pact is, as you can imagine, revolving around the card Tainted Pact, which is an instant for uh, a generic and a black. Um, when you cast it, you remove the top card of your library from the game, and you may repeat that as many times as you want. And whenever you feel like it, you can stop and take the last card and put it in your hand. But if you remove a duplicate card, it just stays exiled. You don't get a card back. So the whole idea of the deck is you play one ofs, so that way you can game sort of the Tainted Pact and never fail. Um, and then you can kind of essentially just get a, a instant speed demonic tutor and go and grab whatever um, whatever piece you need at the moment. So um, which kind of lends itself to playing a bunch of one ofs. So and, and, Given any situation, you can go and find an answer, or um, if your opponent's not presenting any threats, you can go and find your own threat. Okay. Great. Um, so other than Tainted Pack, what, what do you consider to be some of the, the key cards or the key features of this deck? So the way to look at Tainted Pack is, is um, the way I've been looking at it is, is you've got your cantrips that kind of help smooth out your draws, You've got some discard. There's five discard and five cantrips. Um, that's kind of the base of like your standard like legacy uh, setup. Then you've got um, your six counter spells for survivor for, for survivability, along with your six removal spells, and then just some value beaters and just generally um, your bug all star creatures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your win cons are. Uh, essentially, Liliana Vale, Jace, and Search is kind of like an extra value um, uh, piece to the deck. And then, um, obviously, you're, you're, you're kind of relying on creature beats, and you also play one of Lumbering Falls uh, for like late game situations. Um, you also play a crop rotation to go and get the Lumbering Falls if you find yourself on like a stall board and you're playing Drago. So, that's kind of how you. Uh, that's kind of how you win. That's kind of how the deck is sliced out. So it looks like uh, you also have some other, uh, speaking of crop rotation, value targets for that. So it looks like you also have a Bajukabog and a Caracas. Yeah, yeah. So Bajukabog, Caracas, and Cabal Pit. Um, it kind of just represents um, a way to save yourself against Dark Depths, which happens to be a very bad uh combo to face against, you don't really have a whole lot of ways to interact with that. Um, even though you do play Liliana and Innocent Blood, um, you still need something to be able to stop them at instant speed. And so when you're playing something like Repeal, um, Diabolic Edict, and Crop Rotation, that's that's your main way to interact with that. Um, among other things, like obviously there's Reanimator, uh, it just seems like if you're playing a bunch of one ups you need, you need your cards to do more than just one thing, or it's better to have a lot of uh, versatility in the cards you, that you play. Absolutely. So what makes this deck a, a better choice than something like, uh, say, Checkpile or Sulphite Elver in Legacy right now? So, uh, I don't know if it's, it's, I don't even know if it gets up to Tier 2, uh, <laughs> but it is a better, it's better in the Rogue Factor for sure. Like, no one's going to expect, like, any of the shit you're going to play because you're not even going to expect what you draw. So... <laughs> Uh, it's and from that standpoint, it's just a ton of fun to play. Like, it's it's a real like every every game situation becomes a real puzzler, and it's just cool to rip you know all these different spells. You get to play like a bunch of like a bunch of fun interactions just come out of the games that you play. So from that standpoint, it's a little bit better. Absolutely, yeah. I know in some of our games, I've gotten got with like a miscalculation or a <laughs> yeah. spell snare or something like that, completely unexpectedly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's a real uh, surprise factor from both your side, the player side, and also the opponent side. Mm -hmm. um, so, what sort of play styles would appreciate this deck the most? Definitely the control player. Um, if you are, if you liked miracles, um, then you're gonna love getting to tainted pact into a search for cancer, <laughs> flip it, and then go get a Jace and set up. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's the kind of play you're looking for. Um, and playing, uh, I mean, it's kind of plays into the control player's um, uh, toolkit of like just having like a really diabolical sideboard to just hate out your opponent with all the the most ridiculous spells. So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So what have been some great 
tell some of your, your best beat stories from playing this deck. It's very nice. <laughs> uh, I, did, I did like, um, I had Caracas in play, and you were playing uh, Eldrazi Stompy mm -hmm. shenanigans, and you cast an Ulamog. You killed my Liliana and my Ascanto before it flipped. Mm -hmm. And then I um, tainted Pact into a Hymn to Turok, Caracas your Ulamog, and then... Um, and then I and then I hemmed your Ulamog out of your hand. I remember that play. That was awesome. It <laughs> <laughs> was a situation where I felt bad to be on the, the opponent's side, but you know you <laughs> gotta just like applaud like the applaud the beats there. Yeah. Uh, another notable situation was playing against Storm and having just like sometimes like even though this this deck is subject to high variability, sometimes you'll just get the nuts and um, just having like uh, him to two rock uh, duress. Um, Gurmag Angler and um, some some counterspell against a, a storm a storm deck and just mm -hmm. kind of ripping them apart and going to town is awesome and disrupting their Gitaxian probe to help them find a land is excellent. Um, just you just find yourself in a bunch of like random wacky situations and it's like it's almost like um, competitive commander. That's a great way to put it. I love the I love that phrase, Pedro Commander for a legacy deck. <laughs> yes. So I think uh, maybe one of the more obscure cards in the list is that we haven't talked about already is Cabal Pit. So tell us yeah. what uh, matchups that's good for and what it does too for those yeah. who are familiar. Yeah. So it's a um, it's a black land that you have to pay one life to generate one black mana um, like normal, but uh, it has the upside of having a threshold ability if you play one pay one black tap and sack to give one target creature minus two, minus two. Mm -hmm. And that just happens to be really great against um, Delver uh, because, you know, they're reliant on their counter magic to stop um, their their threats from dying. And most aren't playing Stifle these days, right. so you can kind of get them with that, especially if they let a crop rotation resolve. Um, you know, it's just kind of like... An extra, an extra tool and kit. And, and if you can turn a land, an extra land into a kill spell, it just feels really good for the deck. It's kind of trying to play all the angles, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. We'll pause now.